It's a new day, and the sun has returned. Today I'm driving towards Napoleon, not far from where I started out yesterday. I've found a car park in Napoleon, right by the harbour. The town is overlooked by a fortress built by the Venetians. Once the capital of Greece, it's a pretty town. St. Tagma Square is heaving. It's the weekend and it's a popular getaway from Athens. I find the Lion of St. Mark. This was once part of the old Venetian Empire. There's another Venetian castle in the harbour. A walk on the waterfront proves to be a delight. I'm heading south now on my journey towards the Marni. Next stop, the port at Astros. Again, there's the weekend holiday atmosphere surrounding the small fishing port and the sun is back with a vengeance. Even though it's late September, it's 30 degrees Celsius today. Onwards and upwards, I have to slow down and change it to second or even first at many hairpin bends. chosen the route through the mountains on my journey south. I'm planning to spend the night in Githio. I'm still not used to the gears in the little rather beaten up Fiat. Time to park up and look back towards the coast from where I've come. Passing cars are increasingly becoming a rarity. For most of this trip, I'm having the roads mostly to myself. Rather a large shrine. Someone with a rich family must have died on this bend. Greece has a high road accident rate, but I don't encounter any dangerous drivers. Sinetius means continuous, continuous curves. I'm seeing this road sign a lot. I love mountain views. Not many of them in the south of England. It seems like I'm coming to a village. Hmm, that looks like a good place to stop. Very welcome indeed, very welcome. Believe it or not, this is the main road. Aha, oh, traffic. Seems like she's waiting for me. Ah, I've stalled the engine. This is Satina.
another stretch of beautiful mountain scenery. That's Castanista there to the left. If only I had time to explore all those villages. Best not to stay there though. They say the church bell rings all night. Time for a stop. I'm now high in the mountains amongst the pine forests. My iPhone barometer tells me the altitude here is nearly 5,000 feet. That looks like a peak. Oh dear, looks like some traffic up ahead. I've arrived in Githio. My hotel is directly opposite, across the harbour. The morning sun greets me as I look out from our balcony where I'm going to be served my breakfast. They actually brought me two breakfasts, although I'm told breakfast is not a Greek thing. It's a short walk which takes me to the island of Marathonissi, also known as Ancient Crenae. According to Homer, this is where Paris seduced Helen of Troy. It's very small, but the pine forest is pleasant. There are swimmers in the water. It gives me an idea. headed west towards Moninvasia, looking for more beaches on the way. Here's a beach at Tagania. It even has tiny changing cubicles, but no loo. I couldn't be bothered getting wet again, so, I tuck into a picnic lunch I've brought and admire the waves. Oops, where did that go to? There's the rock of Monimbasia, Greece's answer to Gibraltar. I'm driving through the mainland village of Gafira and over the bridge onto Monombasia. One can't drive into the town but have to park up along this road. First, up to the entrance, do a U turn. and find the nearest parking spot. Near proves to be quite a long way.
which way to my hotel. I trundle my suitcase down the stone street. Phew, let me get my bearings. Ah, there's the sea and the quaint houses of the lower town. This is my room. It was once a monk's cell. Night has fallen and all is quiet but for the magic sound of the sea. This morning, I'm back on the seawall to watch the sunrise. I'm working my way up through the lower town to climb up the cliff face to the upper town. This is the gateway to the upper town. The steel bars on the old Ottoman gateway survive. This was an important town in medieval times, and as a fortress, it offered security. Most of the houses up here have crumbled away, although the town, with a bigger population than the one below, was inhabited until the 19th century. I climb to the highest point, overlooking the village on the mainland. This is the Hagia Sophia, formerly a monastery and the only building up here still in use. Unfortunately, it's closed today. Back down at the top of the lower town, I find a tiny chapel in the side of the cliff. This seems to be the west wall of the town. I think I'll take a walk to the lighthouse. Time to explore the town. This is the main square with its canon and cathedral. The Panagia Chrysopolitica with its own square and St Nicholas. Ah, the way to the sea through its own gate in the sea wall. It's a place to swim but Mmm, I'm too chicken. The main street has all the shops and tavernas. It's definitely time for dinner while I watch the boats out on the sea. Before I leave modern Vasya, I've decided to take a walk right around the rock. Here on the northern side, there's just a narrow path between the sea and the cliff. I'm back at the lighthouse, where I was yesterday. A relatively long journey today, back past Scythio and heading for the Memari Paradise Resort Hotel.
quick thing still. Here in the mountains, almost in the Marni, not quite. The Exo Marni, the outer Marni. It's quite nice. I'm just south of the town of Areopolis, and I'm excited because I'm going to visit the Divos Caves. I'm in a boat on an underground lake. I'm sharing it with a family with two small children. This is part of one of the finest cave systems in the world. Human remains from the Neolithic period have been found here. Thank you. 
so much beauty. So much rubbish too. High in the dome, Christ in his majesty. Good grief, what was that? The road is getting distinctly narrow. It's also said to be the coldest river in the world. Ooh. And um, so I'm just going to stop off for see if I can find a place to have a, a pee at the moment. That's how the story took